Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Sport Talk. I'm your host, Evan, and today I'm joined with Zach and Nick. And today we have a football episode for you guys talking about some of the best games of Week 12, um, the expectations for the Browns with Sean Watson, uh, the Zach Wilson situation, is Jimmy G the guy in San Francisco, and talking about the AFC and NFC playoff races because it's heating up. But first... Before we start, make sure to follow us on all of our social medias on Instagram, TikTok, at sport.talk podcast. And we'll dive straight into it, talking about um, some of the biggest games of Week 12. Week 12 brought us a lot of very competitive games. Uh, it was it was a good week of football overall. We had the three Thanksgiving games, which were fun. And then Sunday was packed with stuff. So, uh, Zach, we'll start with you. What was your... Um, what game are you, were you uh, most impressed with? Um, yeah, so I think the game that I most uh, impressed me, most interesting, I think, for the weekend was the Jags and the Ravens. I thought that was a really good game. Um, the Jags were down by, what was it, nine, I think, going into the fourth quarter. I think it was 19 to 10, I think was what it was, going into the fourth. And they uh, – you know, they, they, they came back from that, forced a couple of – or they forced the – well, they, they drove down the field and scored, and then they forced that crucial fumble and uh, got them back into the game there. But that game just – I mean, the fourth quarter of that game was awesome. I mean, both teams were just, like, exchanging blows back and forth. It was great. And the Jags did – the Jags won that game without Travis Etienne, too. So he hurt his foot on, like, the second play of the game. It wasn't anything major, but, I mean, he just – they sat him out just to be cautious, and they still won that game without him. So that was huge. Trevor Lawrence, um, you know, let, well, first of all, Lamar Jackson did something on, like, the third-to-last drive of the game that I don't think I've ever seen from him. He, like, uncorked a 60-yard bomb to, to Deshaun Jackson. Did you guys see that? That was wild. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen him. loaded that up. 35-year-old Deshaun Jackson him, took the corner. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him throw a football that far. It was impressive. So that was pretty cool. And then uh, Trevor Lawrence came back from that score, took them all the way down the field, and then, you know, scored the uh, scored the touchdown there. They were down by one point, and uh, they go for two. It was a gutsy two-point uh, two uh, call, and they got it, which was huge. And that, that ended the game there. Um, they won by one. But I thought that was awesome. You know, Trevor Lawrence just showing his ability to be calm under under pressure like that and lead a game-winning drive against a very good football team. Uh, I think that was that was that was huge for him and for their uh, their team. You know, it was a, a very good win for them. Um, kind of, you know, maybe see if they can get season turned around a little bit, get some momentum after that game. So that was my – my pick of the week game. There's a lot of good games that stood out this week. Obviously the Bengals being the Titans, not Jamar chase. Um, and then like the Eagles being the Packers Sunday night, the game that stood out to me though, was the, uh, the Chargers Cardinals game. Cause like uh, Zach just mentioned earlier, uh, the gutsy two point call to kind of like cement Doug Peterson as a coach that we already knew, but a coach that trusts his team, puts belief in the guys that he has um, at his disposal. Um, but really, like a three and seven team, they don't really have anything to lose, right? The Chargers, on the other hand, are squarely in the hunt for a playoff position in the AFC. They're going on the road against the Cardinals team, who, while not having the greatest season, is still they are still a very talented team with Kyler Murray at the helm. With all the injuries that the Chargers have had since really the beginning of the season, like. Herbert's throwing to DeAndre Carter, Josh Palmer. They just got Keenan Allen back. Gerald Everett's been banged up. Mike Williams still isn't playing. Uh, Austin Eckler, had, he had actually 80 yards and a touchdown. That's a pretty good day. But um, the narrative that Justin Herbert can't close out games is not entirely fair, considering he has 12 career game-winning drives across 42 career starts. It's about once every four games. Um but, like, 274 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, the Chargers needed this win. They were going to be under 500, 5-6, five and six, and as talented as the AFC is, uh, that's a pretty significant hole to climb out of. Um, but, yeah, I just thought that um, Brandon Staley showing a bit of a bit of moxie, a bit of courage to trust this team to 
also go for two to essentially win the game on the road against a very decent Cardinals team that that stood out to me. And I think the Chargers might have saved their season with with that one. Uh, my game that I thought was um, that I going to touch on was the uh, Raiders and Seahawks game. Uh, it was 40-34 Raiders in an overtime thriller. Um, but really, the biggest thing to head was Josh Jacobs had a career day, two, 229 yards, two touchdowns, and he had 74 yards receiving, so probably the um, the best game that I've seen him play um, in the NFL. And for a Raiders team that has like really been struggling this year, sitting at they were sitting at three and seven going into this game uh, against the Seahawks team that's been surprising to a lot of people and have been kind of on the roll lately. I think it's a big win for the Raiders because um, it was looking like they were, all hope was lost for them, and to, I, I feel like this is a good confidence booster for them um, to push over the edge against the Seahawks, but. Um, they really, they really shut down Kenneth Walker. He did have two touchdowns, but only fourteen carries for twenty six yards. As about, on, they held him to less than two yards per carry, which is great for, um, in my opinion, the offensive, um, the offensive rookie of the year at the moment. And um, at in the, I think it was either in the last. It was either in overtime or in the end of regulation. Uh, Max Crosby had a big sack on Geno, or had a big pressure on Geno Smith that eventually led to them getting the ball, and then Josh Jacobs uh, busted through for a, like a what was it, eighty yard game yeah, winning touchdown? Yards, I believe. Yeah. yeah, so I think that that was a heck of a game. It was a high scoring affair, and I feel like that was one of the best. But also one that I want to touch on just a, a little bit. Because a lot happened in this game was the uh, it was the Sunday the Sunday night game the Eagles uh, Packers game. Uh, Justin Hurt or not Justin Hurt, sorry Jalen Hurts. I'm pretty sure in the first quarter had rushed for a hundred yards, which I don't, which I think he's the first quarterback to do that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, it was over a hundred yards in the first quarter. Seventeen yeah. carries, 157 yards. Yeah, so that was pretty impressive. And then on the biggest headline for me on the Packers side was uh, Aaron Rodgers went down with a rib injury and then Jordan Love came in. Um, and I was pleased with what I saw from Jordan Love. Um, he had one uh, great touchdown to Christian Watson. He's been breaking out these last couple of weeks. And I feel like um, that once, like if, if Rodgers does get healthy and comes back, like Jordan Love, I think he, still has a spot on that team just from like because he can definitely i think he can still carry that team a little bit yeah, he, the, the, he might but the packers they're gonna have to make a decision on jordan love or aaron Rodgers here this off season because jordan love's contract is going to be running out after next season i believe yeah. um it's it's still one of the strangest first round picks i've ever seen um and yeah the packers while jordan love played great the packers still lost the game their season's kind of kind of over even if they do win out they finish nine or eight and even that might not be enough to get them into the postseason um yeah, yeah i think the four percent chance to make the playoffs I think. yeah they still got games yeah. against minnesota against miami like the lions and rams aren't guaranteed victories no the packers and and the raiders as well i think both of those teams are still still in uh trouble here um they they got a Pretty big holes to climb out there for themselves. Yeah. But I mean, I, I really thought Jordan Love came in and played pretty well, honestly. I was I was kind of surprised. Um, because I remember last year he came in and had to start for a game and he was just terrible. So uh, you know, he came in and really played pretty well. So I was I was surprised by that. And I think it'll I don't know. If you're the Packers, do you? I mean, do you keep Aaron Rodgers again, or I mean, do you do you go all in on on the uh, young guy here whose contract's about? Up, I don't. You know? I don't, I don't, I don't think you can if you're Green Bay. It's very clear that their Super Bowl window is slammed shut in terms of the the personnel on that team. Um, I would. Aaron Rodgers is still on in face value on paper one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and any team that's a quarterback away will do everything they can to try to get him. Um, and mm -hmm. the Vikings are just on a whole nother level 
right now in terms of being the class of that division. So I think you, I think you got to trade Aaron Rodgers and start the rebuild if you're Green Bay. But that's you know, I I agree with that completely. They're, they they are paying they're paying Aaron Rodgers way too much money to have any like. Well, that's why Devontae Adams left. They can't pay anyone else. They're, like they can't afford to bring in any other guys because they're paying Aaron Rodgers so much money. Yeah. So they can't and, pay Devontae Adams months. Yeah, and so you know, like you said, their Super Bowl window is like done. Like they are, they're they're bad this year. So I mean, I think it's time. And with Jordan Love coming in and actually, you know, he he played pretty well. And you know, he's he's young. So I think I think the time has come to trade Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, get rid of that contract, you know, start, start Jordan loves, you know, rebuild around him. I think that's really their best bet. And, you know, like you said, any, any team that's like a, just a quarterback away is going to go all in for Aaron Rodgers. So, I mean, I don't know whether that... I could see a team like the Raiders potentially. Yeah, I was just about to say the Raiders. Trading Garrett Carr, a couple picks to the Packers to get Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I mean, I'd I'd say probably, probably the Raiders, and then maybe like the um, if Seattle likes what they have around uh, their quarterback yeah. position, they could they got a ton of stuff from their Russell Wilson trade. They might go all in for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, so or like the Forty ers they're always in yeah, they're talks always for some quarterback. Yeah. The Forty ers I, the Forty ers don't even, like they are not that Jimmy Garoppolo is not that bad. I don't I don't know. Every, everybody's trying to can him and get, you know, someone else in there. But Jimmy Garoppolo is not bad. Like, every time he's in there and he starts, they win. I mean, yeah, he's not as talented as some other guys, but they win. I'm just saying. Weaver, Weaver. He he is 10-0 and 0 when he throws for zero touchdown passes in his career. Did you know that? I'm just saying, man. It, this, guy, this guy took him to the Super Bowl, all right? They win games when he's in there. That's all I'm saying. And no one else has proven yet that they can do that with the 49ers. That's all I'm saying. I don't hate Jimmy Garoppolo. I have some opinions on him. Uh, so as of right now, this year he's thrown for 2,381 yards, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions, and he has a QBR of 53.9. Um, but like you said, he has led the Niners to an NFC title game or, or beyond in the two of the last three seasons. But one of the biggest reasons why I feel like the Niners are having success, at least this year, is due to their defense. Defense is first in points per game, first in yards per game, first in rush yards per game, first in yards per rush, first in first downs per game, and first in passing touchdowns. So they have the best defense in the league currently. And through 11 games, they've only given up 173 points, which is the fewest in the NFL. And on their four-game winning streak right now, they've only allowed five touchdowns and given up an average of 243 yards per game. And they haven't given up a single second-half point in that span. And they just shut out the Saints. So I feel like they're winning their games because of their defense, not because Jimmy Garoppolo is, like, outscoring them. It's because the defense is absolutely shutting them down. I mean, yeah, obviously they're winning because of their defense. But I'm just saying, like, what more so what I'm saying, if it's not broke – are they going to mess with Here's the thing with the, the Niners, okay? It is very evident that they have a Super Bowl roster, a Super Bowl caliber team from top to bottom, okay? Like you said, uh, Evan, you said their defense first in points per game, yards per game, rush yards per game, yards per rush, first downs per game, passing touchdowns. They're giving everything. up the fewest in the NFL. Their defense is ridiculous, okay? Uh, and Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have to do anything to win games. The NFC's an objectively weaker conference in the AFC. Um, and Jimmy Garoppolo, he is the perfect game manager quarterback. Okay. But the Niners have the capital to go all in and say, let's get a top tier quarterback who we know can take us to the promised land and see what happens. It might ruin our future, but who cares? We know we can win multiple super, multiple Super Bowls with the team that we have. And it's going to come down to the front office on whether they want to pull that trigger and send Jimmy G to a team that could start a rebuild, but they know they have a decent starter in himself. It's hard when you have a guy like Jimmy G because he's not doing anything wrong. But you know you can get much, much better. And I still don't think Jimmy G is a guy that's going to lead you to a Super Bowl at the end of the day. He are, He did once. 
when he was also the reason they choked and lost the game against Kansas City. He makes that uh, pass on in the fourth quarter, and they go up three, and they might win the game, but he overthrows them by a couple yards. I don't think a guy like Aaron Rodgers at that time misses that throw. I'm sorry, it's just. Well, I, I think quarter. it was. I think it was also a lot of the 49ers defense in that game. I mean, they gave up like what? How many points to the Chiefs in the fourth? They quarter? They lost that game 30, 21 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, like that's not all Jimmy Garoppolo's fault. No, it's not. But he also he did have multiple drives in the fourth quarter to put the game away, and he didn't do it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, in my opinion, he has not given them any reason to bench him or trade him or anything. So that that's all I'm saying. I mean, they're they're they are competing at an NFC Championship Super Bowl contender level with him. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know. Yeah, I think that they definitely should need to ride or they have to ride out with him for this the rest of the season because I honestly think, like, they could they could make an NFC championship. They could win the Ryan. Super Bowl this yeah, year. Yeah, they easily could. They very well could. because of the team that they have. But I feel like, like Nick said, if you do, if one of these top, like if Aaron Rodgers does become available, I would – I would not be like I. We got Jimmy G. I don't need a quarterback. Like I would, if Aaron Rodgers is on the table, I I would take. I would do everything in my power to get that deal done. Um, but also for me, I know since the beginning of the season, the Four um, ers roster has changed a lot. Um, but I'm still a Trey Lance guy. I still think Trey Lance has a lot of potential, and oh, I think he can still. Lance. I think he can still do a lot, but. Like you said, if it's if their championship windows now, um, we don't know. I don't know if they trust Lance enough to take them there, to, because he hasn't really played football in th- about three years. So, but yeah, I mean, he he's it's, obviously it's very interesting. Like, I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo is not as talented as Trey Lance. Yes, that's not even a question. I'm just saying, like, I mean, they they have a team that can win a Super Bowl right now. And Trey Lance is really unproven. Like we have no, we really have no clue what he can do. So I mean, I yeah, like Zach. You said uh, no one's pro- no one's proven they can outperform Jimmy G. No one's got a chance to prove they can outperform Jimmy G. J- Trey Lance played one game that. in a monsoon against Chicago in Week One, and then broke his ankle in the first quarter of Week Two. Like I don't, I didn't say I don't, that. I don't, I, just I don't know that. what you want from them. I, you have to I didn't take say that. All the third I, overall pick that you drafted. You have all to. I said, all I said was Jimmy Garoppolo has not given me a reason to believe he should not be playing. I didn't say that, like, no other quarterback is, like, deserving of a shot. I just said that, like, Jimmy Garoppolo hasn't given me a reason to, to aggressively go find someone else. I think Jimmy Garoppolo has given you plenty of time to show you who he is. And who he is is a guy that might be able to get you to the divisional round conference championship game on a consistent level. But in terms of reaching the holy grail, I just, I just don't think that he's that guy. I don't think he ever will be that guy. And that's ultimately the main goal. It should be the main goal of every single NFL organization is winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is the guy that's going to take the 49ers to that spot. I agree. Well, I don't know. We'll have to see. He already did it once, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm not like I'm not Meanwhile. totally disagreeing with you guys. Like I'm saying, like I mean, yeah, if Aaron Rodgers is on the table, then like obviously, but like I'm just saying, like I'm not sold on Trey Lance, and I'm not sold on the the Niners just giving Jimmy Garoppolo away when he's taken them to the NFC Championship twice in the past three years and once to the Super Bowl. Like I don't know. I mean, maybe. Yeah, I mean, he's not the most talented quarterback ever, but I'm just saying they win when he's in. So I don't know. Do you think that the uh, bridges are burned between both sides, like the front office and Jimmy G? Because at the beginning of the season, all Jimmy G was in talks of in talks with was getting traded or getting cut. But now, like he's they're winning. But I don't know if that if that has changed anything, or if like Jimmy G is like I just, I'm just playing for a new contract, and I don't want that to be with you. You know? Yeah, because he's because he's going to be a free agent this year. So yeah, they definitely they, they might, might have to like. 
they, yeah, so they could be in a position where they have to, he demands a lot of money and they're like, we don't, you're, we don't think that you're worth that much money. And so they might be forced to go with Trey Lance or try to like trade some stuff. Cause I, I, I don't okay. think their cap space right now is very lenient. I think they I don't think Jimmy they, Garoppolo should be in a place to demand a lot of money. Like, because I mean, like, no, like, obviously he's not like a top quarterback, but like, I just, I just think that they, they win when he's in there, and he doesn't lose them games. He does the job well, and that's, that's what I think. But I mean, they, they definitely might have burned the bridges though, because they were aggressively trying to get rid of him in the off season. So I mean, I mean, if I'm him, like, if I'm him, and you know, I came, I come in, and like they're winning games, like I would probably be be like playing for a contract with someone else because like if they're like if they were aggressively trying to trade him in the offseason like I wouldn't want to play for a team like that especially if I've shown that I can come in and win games like I'd rather go play for someone else you know I think I think more than likely he is going to leave next year I'm just saying that like I don't know if that's a great idea on the Niners part to let him go but whatever I don't know I don't think they have another choice like if you if they let if they re-sign Jimmy G and let him play next year, what are you doing with Trey Lance? What was the entire purpose of trading up to draft the third overall pick using him? Well, I, get, I mean, well, well, ankle, but he did. I mean, okay, here, okay, let's think of a hypothetical here, though. So, say Jimmy Garoppolo takes the 49ers to the Super Bowl this year once again, and well. Let's just say this. They don't even have to win it. Just say that they go there once again with Jimmy Garoppolo as the starting quarterback, whether they win or lose. Do you do you still say, yeah, you're like we're getting rid of you. Trey Lance is our guy. Yes, because he did that before, and they already showed what their thoughts were with Jimmy Garoppolo when they started Trey Lance over him at the beginning of the year. Ugh, I don't know. And even if they even, even even if they even if they think that Trey Lance is not going to be as good coming off his injury. They still traded a ton to the Dolphins to draft up – or not draft up, to trade up and draft him. Yeah. So it's like if they do if they do roll with Jimmy G, then the Trey Lance situation is one of the worst deals in recent NFL history. Well, that and might have just have, been a god-awful it, trade. It, I mean, that might like, have been the Niners' entire future. And I think the Niners are too smart of an organization to let that happen. I mean, yeah, but what if Trey Lance is not the guy? Either way, e- even if he's you not gotta like, take if, a chance on him. I mean, yeah, but if he proves to not be that guy, then they still made a god awful trade. That was terrible. So I mean, you know, I mean, he hasn't got the chance to prove that, though. He <laughs> yeah, I mean, just I guess unlucky. Not. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll we'll have to see. We'll we'll see what happens next year then. I don't know because I mean he is very unproven, so I don't know. He could he could be really good. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And I mean see. I I agree I agree though with what you said. The 49ers, the 49ers are they are by no means a dumb organization. So I mean if they traded if they traded a lot to get this guy, I mean obviously they see something with him. So maybe he's not terrible. I guess I don't know. I just I just I don't know. I I like Jimmy G. He comes in and gets the job done. I don't know. I just looked at it right now. Uh, the Niners traded um, their there's 2021 three, first round pick, the 2022 first rounder, and a 2023 thanks. first rounder. Holy yeah. crap! It was so three they, first rounders and a third. Yeah, so yeah, they geez. gave up a lot. Three of first it. and a third. Yeah. Yeah, they Trey Lance better come through then because if he doesn't, they they really hurt themselves. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They gave up the house to trade yeah. up to draft him. So yeah. They're kind of in a weird spot because I do, like, I do agree with you, Zach. Like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like, Jimmy G's shown that he can get you at least to the NFC Championship. But at um, least most teams yeah, would be thrilled like, to get there. Yeah, um, but like I said, I, I feel like it's because he's getting carried by the defense. But um, and then like Nick said, you have Trey Lance, who you traded three first round picks and more for, and if you're basically just sitting him for three seasons and that looks awful bad on the organization for that and then um as of right now the team only has six million dollars in cap space for this offseason so if jimmy g does demand let's say around 
12 to 15 million a year, I they're not going to be able to yeah, respond. Yeah, straight them. up can't pay them. Yeah, so which which that might be the that might be the um that might be what happens because I mean if Jimmy G let's say Jimmy G leads them to three straight NFC championships like that's obviously something and I'm sure that's going to be at like a driving price for him and I feel like he's going to demand probably around 12 to 15 million a year even if it's for a short like one or two year contract and I don't the, the 49ers unless they make some roster adjustments uh, won't be able to really pay him. So they might be forced to start Trey Lance, even if he's not fully ready. So they're kind of in a weird spot right now. So this yeah, year could be Super Bowl or bust for them, honestly. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, to to that point, though, um, if Jimmy Garoppolo would happen to demand uh, too large of a contract for them to pay, um, it's not worth it for them to make roster adjustments just to re-sign him when they have a third overall pick sitting on the bench. You know, I mean, it's an unproven third overall pick, but I mean, it's still though. You know, like I, I don't think it would be worth adjusting a Super Bowl roster that is already around Jimmy Garoppolo just to bring him back when they have a guy on the bench who could be even better. You know? Yeah. The so quarterback. What I'm saying, if he's demanding too much money, then let him go. Like, don't even try. If he's like, if he's demanding more than you can pay him, then I would say don't even try it. You know, let him go at that point, but yeah, the quarterback is the most important position on the team, but it's not more important than the rest of the team. So, yeah, well, and like you know, like like Evan said, their defense is what's is what's like spearheading their um, their wins this year, um, and they have a very like Jimmy Garoppolo is surrounded by one of the best rosters in the NFL. So yeah, yeah. like. Why like don't don't mess with that when you have a third overall pick sitting on the bench? I mean, even if Trey Lance is not that yeah. good, he'll still at least win games just because of that surrounding team, you know? Yeah, I think that's the point me and Nick are making. At least uh, I think uh, is that Jimmy G isn't like the reason they're winning because they have such a talented roster, but he also, like you said, he doesn't hurt them in any way. But like we're saying, like he's yeah, he's it, well, I agree fairly replaceable. That because of the level of team that he is around him. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I was just saying, like, like he wins. He doesn't do anything to to hinder the team from winning. Like, he, he comes in and he does his job. And, like, on, the 40, on this 49ers team, his job is not to come in and win them the game. His job is to come in and not lose them the game. And he does that very well, um, you know. So on on a different team, um, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo, like Jimmy Garoppolo, isn't the guy that's gonna like win the game. You know, like he's not like a Burrow or a Herbert or like a Rogers or a Brady um, that's gonna be the guy to win the game. But like he's very serviceable. He he he's he's a solid quarterback, and he does like his job very well. I think so. That's my driving point of saying if it's not broke, don't fix it. Nick, I've seen some things that Jimmy G could go to the Colts. What would you think of that? No, I don't think no. No, no. Please Why? No. I don't. I, because we're already mediocre. Jimmy G doesn't help us at all. I would much rather be 3-14 and 14 for a year or two, get a like quarterback in the draft that, can actually throw the ball more than 20 yards down the field and maybe make a chance with the roster that we have of a deep playoff run. Being mediocre in the NFL is the worst possible place you can be. And Jimmy G is the that, definition of mediocre. That last point I agree with. Being mediocre in the NFL is the worst possible thing. I agree with that. But everything else that you said, I don't know if I agree with. I I would what you wouldn't much rather go three and fourteen for a year or two and then have a you the Bengals were terrible for two years. They got Joe Burrow, Jamar no, Chase, I, went to the Super Bowl the next year. No, yeah, I agree with no. What, what I meant is that I think Jimmy Garoppolo is by far the best quarterback that you guys would he, would have had in the past three yeah, or four he, years. Though he would be the best quarterback on yeah he would be the best quarterback on our roster. That doesn't mean I want him on the roster right now. There are major, major holes on that team that need fixed before we can even think about taking a mediocre quarterback under our wing for the upteenth straight year. 
I mean, that's kind of what they did with like Matt Ryan. They did like, the same thing with Matt like, Ryan, Philip Rivers, Carson Wentz. Yeah, like, just getting older, like Megan, does not work. Well, I guess the Colts really aren't like, yeah, like I, the Colts don't have the roster that the Niners have. Like they aren't like the Colts are much more than just a quarterback away. So in that yeah, case, I guess Jimmy Graham would now. not They're really be need to um, a good choice right now. But, Unless the Niners give us like, picks to take on his salary, like, no thanks. Not now. You guys need to just tank and get Bryce Young or Will yeah, Levis that's what or something. I'm saying. Will Levis is well, not. That ain't happening. Yeah. No, it's not. He's We're going to finish. He's got to be going to have. We're going to finish 7 9 and 1. And. I said this before we started the podcast. Seven, nine, and one, like the fifteenth overall pick. We can't trade up to draft anyone. We're gonna have to draft another skill position player that won't be used. So that's just well, maybe you what, can get what maybe you did. can get like a top tier receiver because you don't really have that right now. I mean, maybe. I don't think we need. Re- I don't think receivers are our biggest problem though. Yeah, I don't think. It well, is. obviously, you can have a quarterback. Yeah, but we're not going to be able to draft a quarterback with the pick that we have unless we go for like right Anthony, now, unless we waste the first round on like Anthony Richardson. Which I, why would we do that? I also don't want that to happen. But like, <laughs> as of right now, the Colts have pick nine in their mocked um, Will Levis. Okay. Okay. I don't think Will Levis is that great, but it's better than rocking with Jimmy G for four years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Speaking of not great quarterbacks, Zach Wilson, former number two overall pick, um, he's been awful lately, um, and it's been really bad. And I know me and Zach were high on him coming into the season, and we were very wrong on that because uh, we said that he was going to be the reason for the Jets' success, but that has not been the case whatsoever. But um, yeah, that was the bad thing. Still alive, record-wise at least. He got benched for Mike White, and Mike White came in and did Mike White things. Twenty-two for twenty-eight, three three hundred fifteen yards and three touchdowns, and it had a hundred forty-nine pass rating, which was first among quarterbacks in Week Twelve. Um, Mike White had an absolute day. Do you yeah, start so, Mike White going forward? That was going to be my question. Should Mike White remain the starter for the rest of the season? I think it should um, be a week by week thing. I don't really I don't know. Here's the thing with the week by week thing. You don't have any consistency on the offense. Like the players, True. the offensive personnel, the offensive coordinator don't get any semblance of what they're gonna get week by week if the head coach keeps changing coach coaches, changing quarterbacks, not due to injury. Like True. Well, but I see, think, here's the other issue though. Know, if if you're gonna go back to like it's hard to go back to Zach Wilson this year because they didn't just bench him. They totally inactivated him. He was in street clothes. Like, he wasn't even on the active roster. Like, they yeah. benched him that bad. Well, we, I think we so, – Zach Wilson I'm – gonna, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant on Zach Wilson here, okay? It's not about the fact that he's been – Objectively terrible, okay? He's been objectively awful in his first over year and a half in the NFL. There's no doubt about that. The lack of accountability that he is showing on a week-to-week basis is something that I have not seen before since I started watching the NFL, and I've watched it for over a decade now. You have guys like Josh Allen and Justin Herbert who can throw for – and like Joe Burrow, who throw for literally 300 yards and three touchdowns, but they make one bad throw in the most crucial spot, and they blame themselves for the entire game. Meanwhile, you have Zach Wilson completing nine passes against the Patriots, leading his offense to three points, and he's like, oh, I don't think I did the defense. I don't I don't think I let the defense down. Do you have eyes? Like, do you, can like, you how, see? Are you- how, immature, how immature do you have to be? Like, he very clearly was awful. I mean, he was horrible. Very it's, clearly. It's not just that game. It's not just that game. It's this whole no, season. It's multiple since games. It's been the whole the... year. He sucks. He's awful. Evan, yeah, I, our I, take I was terrible. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, an yeah, awful not... take. 
Yeah, it was. I don't. I don't like. I don't really know what. I don't know what to. I don't know what to say. Four I touchdowns, mean, like, five interceptions. He's had what? Eight games? Seven? Eight games? What? Yes. Yeah. He's the number two overall pick. I get the Jets. Like, haven't had history of developing any quarterbacks ever, apart from Chad okay, but this before bad. his shoulder blew out. But, like, this is one of the biggest fumbles I have ever seen from an NFL team ever. I genuinely think that it is time to – it, it might be time to ride out uh, Mike White because Mike White came in and went off immediately, just it's, like he did yeah, last year. Yeah. Like, like Mike it's, White – like he he might objectively be the better quarterback. He might be. I don't know if he is. I don't think the Mike White Mike White's had two good starts, right? And all the other games he's played, he has not played well. But at least like it is very clear that he has the backing of the locker room and yeah, the yeah. front office. Like the players love yeah. him. The players were like, this guy came in against the Bengals last year, had one of the best first starts in NFL history. Mm-hmm. And everyone loves him because he's a super humble. And dude. he did it again this year, right? So it's like I don't well, think and, Mike White is Zach, gonna Zach take Wilson anywhere. is clearly horrible. He's, it's not just that he's just he's he has a complete lack of self awareness. When well, it he's comes immature. To, well, yeah, that's expected. He's a young kid, but just the complete lack of self awareness and accountability is. I have never seen yeah. it. And I, I didn't I did not call it coming out of college, but I said that he was not gonna be great because he played at BYU. He's been coddled. I don't want to say he's been coddled his whole life, but he's gotten what he's wanted basically his you're entire right. life. No, you're right. Um I um I mean I I'm I, I don't know if you can say I don't know if you can just brush off like the whole well he's immature because he's young. He's 22, 23, whatever he is. Yeah, I don't know like, if you can just brush that off because look at these other young quarterbacks, Burrow, Herbert, Jackson, like those Mahomes, those are all very young quarterbacks, and none of those guys would ever do like like, like none of those guys would ever have said what Zach Wilson said. Like if those guys had like that terrible of a game, they would have been ready to hang themselves because of it. Yeah, right. It would not right. have been they. They would have been raised yeah. like full count of like, Josh, Josh Allen did after his game against the Vikings. He's like that was a. He was like the first interception was, uh, kind of iffy. It was fourth down. Like a play has to be made, or we give the ball to them anyway, which I agree with. But the second one, he was like it was a bad read, a bad throw. I need to do better, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. But, and like and he, Zach Wilson, even though he Zach had Wilson three played on the defense, that. so I mean, like you can clearly tell that there's like a immature there's like a character issue with him no yeah. one likes him like like the team and the coaches don't like him like he, he he's, he's lost the whole franchise he sucks he's, he's lost the franchise he's immature i think it's time to roll with mike white and do you trade zach wilson would anybody even want it at this point i don't know if any team i I'm mean sure, it might be I, I know a team, team that would want them i know a team that would want him colts Carolina Panthers. Uh, they just tried it with Sam Darnold. Hey, they tried Sam it with Darnold. Sam Darnold. Baker Mayfield might as well get another one. No, this is a – Okay, <laughs> but the Panthers are in like a full-on rebuild mode. I think it's time they draft a quarterback instead of stealing these they're crappy gonna, jets. Yeah, they're they're going to get – I was just saying because like, the Panthers' track record is to get like busts of – top five picks if the panthers <laughs> like what they have they might trade like a fourth round pick to get uh zach wilson yeah i think i think that's Why? the most you can give up for him as a third or fourth but like also they Joe they Douglas got a second round pick for sam darnold so yeah i don't really know what why no, do they keep I, taking I, these zach crappy wilson jets quarterbacks here's the thing with that though if the panthers want a quarterback this is the year to do it they can take their pick on who they yeah. want yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Draft one. Don't take a shot on this god awful yeah. Jets quarterback. Like last year's quarterback class is obviously not great. This year's is significantly better. If they're going to oh, want to yeah. draft a quarterback, this is going to be the year to do it because they have a bad enough team where they can essentially Stroud, draft who they Young, want. Levis. Who else is in this class? Stroud, Young, Anthony Levis, Richardson. And who else? Anthony Richardson, Richardson. yes. Uh, and there's one more I'm forgetting. Um, uh, if they want to draft Hendon Hooker, there's I mean Hendon Hooker. He tore his ACL. I don't know. Yeah, but... he tore his ACL, and he's like tw- he's going to be like 24, 25. Yeah, so. seriously. Yeah, he's n- he's yeah, not he, a young. Be... He's not a super young quarterback. That's the thing with him. Jeez. Yeah, he'll be twenty five coming into the draft. 
how is he so old? Is he a fifth year senior? Yeah. Yeah. Like Goodness. Um, do you want to hear a crazy stat line? Yeah, hit me with it, Evan. So right. you know it's bad for a player when you're getting comparisons to this guy. But over their first 20 career starts, Zach Wilson and Jamarcus Russell have very similar huh. stats. Uh, Zach Wilson has a 70.7 passer rating. Jamarcus Russell had a 70.6 passer rating. Touchdown to interception ratio, um, Zach Wilson 13 touchdowns, 16 picks. Jamarcus Russell 15 touchdowns, 13 picks. Zach Wilson has completed 55.6% of his passes to Russell's 52.1%. Um, they both have around 6.2 yards per attempt. And um, through the first 20 career starts, Wilson's 8-12 and 12 and Russell was 6-14. and 14. Um, As a quarterback, getting compared to Jamarcus Russell, that is... The, the lowest of the low. Yeah, that, <laughs> the guy literally, like... Have I you think- heard this? the story where the guy gave him like a blank disc of film and told him to like watch it. And then he like did He's it. Like, yeah. I watch it. Yeah. Like that's when you know <laughs> that it's that you need to change something. And Jamarcus getting... Russell is universally considered like the biggest bust in NFL history. Mm-hmm. And, and there's honestly like they're scarily close. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some similarities between both of them. Both of them were top picks in the draft at quarterback. Both have um character, character issues. issues yeah and both just flat out suck i never so, even thought about that i like that that comparison never even crossed my mind but now that you say that it's legit like zach Wilson might be one of the biggest busts ever yeah like the one like, after demarcus he, Russell he's left the Raiders. he wasn't the first but like... yeah after demarcus russell left the raiders he was so bad that no team gave him another shot like they just he was just out of the NFL after three years. I mean, do you think that's how it's gonna be with Zach Wilson? Like, do you think anybody's gonna give him it a might. shot at all? He, yeah, because here's the thing. Unlike I don't know who like, would give him a shot. That has shown flashes of being an okay NFL quarterback. Zach Wilson just has not. I no, don't know if too. there's ever been a single good game he's had in his career. There probably is, and I just don't know it off the top of my head, but like But even I if there has been, it's only I, one. I, Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of like if he just owned up to him, his poor play in that Patriots game, like, do you think we're, I mean, I feel like he would still be getting benched, but I feel like it wouldn't have been as finite as it is now. Like, if he would have said, yeah, like, I let the defense down. Like, that was on me. Like, we, we didn't get anything going in the second half. Like, I take full responsibility for the loss. Like he more than likely he still would have gotten benched. benched. I don't know. I mean, he still played awful. Like to get two, what was it, two inches in yard? Yeah, like, it was like two inches per play the entire second yeah, half. Yeah, like that's. I mean, it was like awful. He, he, yes, so, he played very badly, but like, do you maybe give him one more week and like? Well. I, I feel like a lot of the benching was because I mean, yeah, he played terribly, but I feel like a lot of it was kind of just because, like, okay, this kid's immature. We need to get him out of here, you know? Like, it was. If he would have owned I up think to it, it, then I feel like maybe one more week. Yeah, I think they they could have done what like the Patriots did, where you know, like Mac Jones was struggling, and he he like there's nothing wrong with him. Like he was saying all the right things, but he was just struggling. And they're like, all right, we're gonna bench you, get your mind right, reset yourself. And then he came back like a week later, and he's been playing a lot better than he did um, before he, he yeah. did get benched. I think, so, yeah, I, I think it, it might have been able to – like that could have been the case. Um, but I I just don't know. With, with, with him responding the way he did, to me it shows a lot about him as a person. Um, so, you know, I, he will I feel like – He will be a leader if there, in the NFL. Yeah, like he's he's not he's not a leader. He he's, he will not be a leader um in the NFL and he's not performing well. So, I mean, you know, a lot of times if if a guy um if a guy's like character isn't really quite there, but he's performing really well, then they'll still keep him cuz you know, he's playing well on the field. But I mean, he's just 
trash. Right. So I think he's really kind of um, working yeah. himself out of job here. And I don't know if anyone else is going to take a shot on him. Uh, um, something, one, like a big red flag that I have with Wilson's play is so if you look at their two best, oops, you look at their two best receivers, it's Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore, right? Garrett Wilson mm-hmm. with, without Zach Wilson, 41 targets, 23 receptions, 309 yards, four touchdowns with Zach Wilson, 38 targets, 26 receptions, 319 yards, zero touchdowns. Um, but the biggest person that has been hurting from Elijah Moore or have been hurting from Zach Wilson's play is Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, when Zach Wilson is not on the field, he has 23 targets, 14 receptions, 213, 203 yards, and one touchdown this year. With Zach Wilson at the quarterback, 13 targets, six receptions, 81 yards, zero touchdowns. And this is a guy who last year had a breakout had a breakout last couple of weeks and was really looking like the Jets wide receiver one and then comes in this year and he's like he said multiple times in a presser like I don't get the ball thrown to me and I don't know what I don't know what I'm doing wrong like I just don't get the ball and so like that ended yeah. up him like requesting a trade and stuff and I feel like if you're a quarterback and you can't get the ball to your best receivers that's a red flag in my opinion because yeah. you have two it's of the most explosive young the receivers the quarterback yeah, and he's just he. I don't. I haven't watched many Jets games, so I'm not sure if it's just like he's not seeing them, or it's just like deliberately not throwing them the football. But I feel like that's a major red flag to your two best receivers. Their um, targets when you're on the field is significantly less than when you're off the field. Yeah, well, and um, I think Elijah Mitchell. You know, the whole thing of him requesting a trade and everything. I think that also just kind of shows how much Zach Wilson's lost the locker room and lost the respect of his teammates in the franchise. And then, as soon as Mike White comes in, Elijah Mitchell has the best game of his um, uh, season this year. Uh, Garrett Wilson has a two touchdown game. So, <laughs> I mean, I think their offense is clearly better with Mike White. I think they played a bad Bears defense, but I still think Mike White is better than Zach yeah. Wilson. I think he's proven it time and time again. Yeah. Well, and I think, yeah. you know, from this game, it, it's it, it's tougher to tell from this game just because of they were playing the Bears. But, um, you know, last year against the Bengals, the Bengals are one of the better defenses in the league, and Mike White tore them up. Um, yeah. And, you know, he came in and did it again this year. I realized the Bears aren't great. But it's, it's still, you know, it's just a confidence thing. And that that locker room loves Mike White, as you guys said earlier. And obviously they don't like Zach Wilson. They've all lost respect for him. Um, you know, he's he, he's losing that team. Um, so, and, that, and that's never, like, as a quarterback, you have to be the leader of the team. And he's not, very clearly, you know. It's, it's not what you want to see. Mm-hmm. Do you think that? Um, the Jets like should start Flacco over Mike White because before Zach no. Wilson was in, Flacco wasn't playing too bad. Or do you think they should ride with Mike White? Because no, as of right I now, they're, they have a shot of making the playoffs. They're, I would ride with Mike of, White until he gives me a reason not to, and then I would try Flacco. I'm riding with Mike White, though. How old is Mike White? He's not very old, right? He's 27. Yeah, I'm riding with Mike White. I would go and with see, Mike White. If, see if he takes him to the playoffs this year. If he takes him to the playoffs this year, they might have something with him. Could be like a Taylor Heineke type story. It yeah, could be. I feel like it would. But yeah, I as of right now, there's seven or four. So do you think he's better than Taylor Heineke? Mike White? Yes. I think yeah. Heineke's better. Okay, that's – I'm not – don't know. How? Mike White is not better than Taylor Heineke. He's – I mean, Taylor Heineke is unironically decent. Like, I mean, they're both the decent. He's I mean, unironically I don't like, all right. I don't know. Don't you feel like Mike White probably is the better physical talent? I mean, probably because he's six five. Yeah. I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I guess they're both pretty even. I've, I don't know. I've seen way. Taylor Heineke. I've Heineke. I've seen Taylor Heineke lead that team to the playoffs. I have not seen Mike White do it yet. So. Yeah, if I'm taking no, a quarterback yeah. for the entire season, I'm taking Heineke over Mike White. Well, I would too. I was I was more so just talking about like just like as like a physical like side of it. Yeah, I mean, physical. I mean, yeah, Taylor yeah. Heineke's proven it. 
much more than Mike White. So yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the Jets, like they might have to like draft a quarterback or something. I saw some some it was a Jets fan who was talking about like who who he wants to see a quarterback next year and he named Lamar Jackson. That was like a stretch. Yeah. All um right. and then it was it was like guys like Gardner Minshew, um Geno Smith, like just these kind of mid tier to average quarterbacks at best. So the Jets, they might be they might be in trouble because they're not gonna be bad enough to get a top pick as of right now, unless they just absolutely fall off a cliff, which would be the most Jets thing to happen. Mm-hmm. But um Could as happen. of right now, like, yeah. Um they're not bad enough to get like one of those top quarterbacks. And I don't know, like with their track record, I mean obviously you're gonna have to draft the quarterback anyway, but like their track record speaks for themselves. They are not good at drafting QBs. So they might I don't know. They're kind of in a. They're kind of in trouble when it comes to the quarterback position. But I, I don't think they're going to fully give up on Zach Wilson. I think he's going to get. I think he's going to get another shot towards like the end of the season once kind of all of this stuff kind of settles down a little bit. And if Mike White is not like playing that great, I think he'll get another chance. But I do think there's some serious red flags that have been revealed this season and he very well could be like out of a job here very quickly i would just yeah i think i think if he gets another shot it's his last oh yeah for sure if he gets another shot and is bad again he's out of the league yeah based off of the stuff he's shown prior so it is – we're going into week 13, and that means that Deshaun Watson is going to be returning for the Browns after his 11-game suspension. Oh, um, boy. And so, as of right now, the the Browns are 5-7, and seven, third in the AFC North. And they have the, – their upcoming games are the Texans, Bengals, Ravens, Saints, Commanders, and Steelers. So, what are your expectations for the Browns with Deshaun Watson uh, at the helm now? Um. I think that they dug themselves too big of a hole in the first 12 weeks of the season. I mean, even with their win against Tampa Bay, I think they're, like, as you said, they're five and seven. I think they're four and seven, actually. Four and seven. Yeah, they it's are. Four your point will stands. Um, I think the AFC is too good, so I don't think the Browns are going to make the playoffs this year. But I am, you all know my stance on this. I think Deshaun Watson is that guy. Um, if he comes back and plays, Eighty percent of what he was playing in Houston, the Browns are automatically contenders in the AFC, and I will I will die on that hill. Um, I think I, I beat I, they beat the Texans this week. I don't think it would have mattered. Uh, we'll see how good he is when they play the Bengals in two weeks. In is that game, that game's in Cincinnati, right? It's at Cincinnati, but okay. Let's I, honestly, I don't think that's going to be a good game to show how good he is because the Bengals. For well, some said we'll reason, see how good he is. Well, but I don't know if we will. I don't know if that's going to be a good game to tell because for some reason the Bengals just choose to play their worst football ever every time we play the Browns. So, I mean, Deshaun Watson very well could have a 1,000-yard game against the Bengals, and then the next week he just sucks. And that's just because the Bengals are terrible against Browns every year. Well, the, I mean, that's I can't really argue with that, actually. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, the – yeah, I can't really argue with that. Yeah. Well, if, I still think if Deshaun Watson throws for, like, 400 yards and four touchdowns against the Bengals, that's still something to, like, keep yeah. your eye on. Well, yeah. yeah, it's something to keep your eye on. But, like, like he very can't just completely that disregard his performance because he's playing the Bengals. Well, the Browns I mean, the don't Bengals have a ton of that- good teams left on their schedule. The Bengals are that bad. Every time they play the Browns, like it is like like the Bengals can be considered one of the best teams in the NFL. And then when they play the Browns, they are automatically the worst team, the 32nd ranked team in the NFL. For no good reason. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. Yeah, Cleveland owns Cincinnati. That's just uh, Yeah, it's like it uh like the Dolphins Bengals, and the Patriots yeah. and like the Jags and the Colts. Like there's always that the one. The Jags do not own the Colts. We literally beat them this year. 
It's just not true. <laughs> oh, I don't know, it. man. You guys got locked. You guys got locked out of the playoffs last year because of a one and nine jack. And then we beat them in week one. In Jacksonville, week two, week two, but we beat them in week whatever it was. We beat them this year. Okay, the Jags do not own us. It's only in Jacksonville that they own us. The Steelers own us, which we'll see how it's that is. Pretty bad too. Hour and a half, but um, yeah. The Jags do not own us. I will not tolerate that slander. <laughs> I will tolerate most other slander this year, but not. not I, I will not agree, good. though, that the Browns, for some reason, have the Bengals number. I don't know why. The Bengals are very clearly the better football team, but In they, terms of they talent, have yeah. their number. Don't know why. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, really, really, I think uh, Deshaun Watson coming back, you know, really, I don't know. Um, I agree with Nick. I think the Browns are already in too much of a hole to really do anything with this year. Um, I don't think there's really much of a chance that they're going to make the playoffs because, I mean, obviously they're like they're not going to win out. Um, in order for them to make the playoffs, I think they would almost pretty They'd much have, have to, to win, win out. out. Yeah, if and they went out, they're on ten wins. And, and that's obviously not going to happen. So I don't think they're. And with with how tough the AFC is, if the Browns were in the NFC, I would say maybe, but. The AFC is just too tight. It's too tough. I don't think the Browns are going to make it this year, um, even with Deshaun Watson in. Um, but for Deshaun Watson, though, you know, I, I don't really know what's realistic and what's not because we haven't seen him play football in two years. Um, so he he might he might not be as good as what people remember or uh, what people are expecting. Um, and and I don't really know what it's going to do to the Browns either. You know, because the Browns. The past couple of years have really been mainly a like ground and pound type of football team, um, so I'm not sure if uh, with Deshaun Watson coming in, I'm not sure if that's if if they're going to try to change that narrative and become more of a balanced team or or more of a passing first type of team. And if that does happen, I'm not sure how that would go. Like I'm not sure if I, I don't know if that would make them worse, honestly. Um, I don't so think the I Browns just, don't are going to be a. I don't think the Browns are going to be a pass first team. I just don't think that's in their DNA. I don't think they should be a pass first team with the backfield. Nick Chubb is, they should in be, my no. opinion, the best running back in the NFL. With the offensive line that they have and Nick Chubb in the backfield, they should absolutely be a ground and pound type team. But yeah, they Deshaun should Watson be, and they, and they have been. But that's the thing. Other dimension. Deshaun Watson. What's that? I said he adds like a complete other dimension in terms of what they can do through the air if he plays as good as he did in Houston. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if, you know, like with him coming back, they're going to try to kind of get more – like they're, they're going to try to become more of a passing team with him coming back. I'm not sure if, if they'll try – they shouldn't. I think that would make the Browns worse. Um, I, I just – I don't know if that's what they're going to try or not. So I really don't know. Um, and, and I don't know if he's even going to be as good as he was with the Texans either. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be very interesting. I don't want to say I'm excited to see what he does because I still think he's a terrible person, but, yeah. you know, it, it is what it is. I'll be keeping an eye on it. Yeah, yeah. I think if you're, if you're a Browns fan, I think through these next, what, five weeks? Six, yeah, six weeks. Six weeks. You want to see, like like you said, the odds of them making the playoffs is very slim unless they win out, which I doubt will happen. Um, you From Deshaun Watson, if you're a Browns fan, you just want to see flashes of old. You want to just see – you want to see this is, like, the reason why we paid you $230 million. Like, you want to – you just want to see flashes of, of a good quarterback. And I don't think that – I think he raises the ceiling for this team for sure, but I think they definitely should still be heavy ground with because they have one of the best running back duos, if not the best, in Kareem Hunt and uh, Nick Chubb. And Nick Chubb this season is the best back in the NFL. And so I think that they um, just trying to kind of implement uh, Deshaun into the offense and kind of get him more comfortable because he hasn't played organized football in about two years. So I I think it's going to take him a couple of weeks to kind of get out the gate um, and kind of look like um, his old self. And so I feel like as a Browns fan, um, I'm not ex- you shouldn't be expecting 
like for him instantly to be top five quarterback. I think you should just yeah. you want to see just flashes of Texans to Sean Watson. Yeah, I th- and hope that that carries over into next season. Yeah, Browns fans are gonna have. Spot. Yeah, I was just about to say that Browns fans are gonna have to taper their expectations a little bit uh, for next season because next season he's gonna have a full off season to learn the offense, get under all the schematics that he's gonna be taught. Uh, he's already learned some of them, but he's going to have like a full grasp of what they do and how they work. Um, so yeah, I, I think that next season is going to be the true test for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I, I really think that's what a Browns fan would want to see is just flashes of um, uh, the Texans to Deshaun Watson. I think that's probably the best case scenario for them this year is just getting flash of flashes of that, uh, getting a few more wins. Uh, that's probably the best case scenario I would say for this season. Right, so we said that the Browns more than likely aren't going to make the playoffs, but let's take a look at at the end of week 12, how the playoff hunt looks. So as of right now for the AFC, the one seed is the Chiefs, two seed Dolphins, three seed Titans, Ravens with the four seed, Bills five seed, Bengals six seed, Jets seventh seed. But, and they have seen in the wild card, you have the Patriots and Chargers who are just one game back each. And so, I mean, if you look at if you look at the AFC playoff race, a lot of teams are seven and four, and there's three t- and there's the Bills, Dolphins, and Chiefs are better than that. So there's it's a very tight race right now in the AFC. So it's going to be interesting for sure to see like how everything like pans out especially with like the jets like they're kind of in question the Bengals have their hardest stretch of the season coming up the bills they just lost von miller for potentially the whole season and they haven't looked like the team we thought they would be so it's going to be really a tight race i think yeah i just i think the chiefs are i mean barring some unforeseen events happening the rest of the year. I think the Chiefs have kind of got the number one seed on lock. Uh, I, I think the Chiefs have shown that they're they're, they're kind of the head of everyone in the AFC. Not by much, but I, I think they are. Um, and then once you get past the Chiefs, though, so once you look at the, um, the Dolphins, Titans, Ravens, Bills, Bengals, uh, I think that's where it gets really tight. Um, I think the Dolphins, the Titans, the Ravens, the Bills, the Bengals, um, I – I think all of those teams are very close. Um, and then obviously the Jets. But, I mean, at least in the, in the AFC North, that division is up for grabs um, pretty much completely. The Bengals and the Ravens are tied for first right now. Um, you know, the Bengals are hitting their stride like they did at this time last year. And obviously we saw what happened with that last year. Um, so the AFC North is completely up for grabs. Um, like you said, the Bills have been playing quite at the level we thought they would be. They just lost maybe their best defensive player for probably the whole season. Um, so I think the the Bills are kind of in a tough spot. Um, the Titans obviously are overrated like usual. But, I mean, I think between all of those teams, it's, it, it's a really tight race. Um, I think it will really be interesting to, to watch the rest of the season here. But I would say the Chiefs yeah. have a pretty firm grasp of that one seed, though. Um, yeah, I uh, don't think – I think the Chiefs are going to end up in the AFC as the one seed, but I don't know if they're – the Bills beat them. So it's like if they lose and the Bills went out, the Bills get the one seed off the tiebreaker. Yeah, but I just don't know if that's – do Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's, that's going to happen. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I don't think the, I don't think the Bills are going to win out. That Von Miller injury, while he didn't tear his uh, ACL, he tore his meniscus slightly. Um, it's still a big injury for that defense. Um, are we given if we're given predictions? I just yeah predictions on how it's going to finish out. I think I'm just going to go through the list of the teams that I have in this order at this time this year: uh, Chiefs one seed, Bills two seed, Ravens three, Titans four. Uh, Bengals five, Dolphins six, Chargers seven. I think any one of those teams can win the Super Bowl. I am I am fully confident that any one of those seven teams I just listed, if everything goes right, can win the Super Bowl, can win the entire thing. 
I think the Titans are the least likely out of those. Yeah, teams I was gonna say the Titans are iffy, but like as long as Ryan Tannehill doesn't lose games for them, I think they could very easily make a run to the Super Bowl. And once you get to the Super Bowl, anything can happen. I I yep. don't see the Titans I, doing that, but the other the other teams, I think, I think like the other teams have a fair shot. But I I don't see the Titans really. But yeah. Yeah, I, I think my AFC playoff picture looks almost identical to yours, Nick. I think, um, I think maybe just a couple switches. Like I, I feel like uh, I think the Dolphins might be able to hang on to the first seed in the AFC East. But I think all of, like I still have all of, like the same teams in there, and I do agree. I think other than the Titans, I would not be utterly shocked if any of these teams makes like a Super Bowl run. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked at all. The Dolphins play the Bills in Week 15. That game is in Buffalo. I think the Bills win that game. I think that's how they win the division. Is that that game right there in Week 15? I could see that. I could definitely see that. The AFC, the AFC um, West, and or not West. Um, uh, shoot, what was I going to say? East. The East is the what I wanted to say. East, okay. The East and the North are very tight. The top two teams in both of those divisions are very tight. Like I don't I don't really think the Jets and the Patriots are really all that great. Um but the Bills and the Dolphins that it's up for grabs between those two just like the Bengals and the Ravens. And I agree with what you said Nick. I think the division comes down to that game with the Bills and the Dolphins and the winner takes the division. Uh, I've I've said this before. I think that's how it's going to come down in the AFC North. I think it's going to come down to that Week 18 matchup between the Ravens and the Bengals. I think winner takes the division. Uh, so it's it's a tight race between those two for sure. So I mean, I I agree with pretty much all the teams that you said uh, AFC like playoff wise, except for there might be a couple of switches just based on who wins, based on who wins those two divisions. But yeah, I think it's those those seven teams there. I, I, I see. As the ones making it in, I yeah, Chargers over the Jets, I would say. Yeah, I was gonna say, we've you've been you've you said early in uh, our predictions podcast that you um had that week eighteen game being a crucial game for uh, who gets like the one who gets like the head of the division, and so as of right now, that's looking like what's more than likely going to happen. Yeah, Unless it's it's held up so far. Lose a lot of the stretch, so yeah. Yeah, I feel that, like that game is going to be like that. That's going to be a rocking game. I mean, but now the thing that's kind of scary though for the Bengals is that I think how like like the Bengals' remaining schedule is very difficult compared to the Ravens. The Ravens' remaining schedule is not really that difficult. Let's move on to the NFC. So as of right now, the Eagles have the first seed. Vikings second seed, Niners third seed, Bucks fourth seed, Cowboys fifth seed, Giants sixth seed, Commanders seventh seed. So, as we've said, the NFC is significantly worse than the AFC is. Um, but I think the first three seeds are pretty much locked. I think it really just comes down to who wins that um, NFC South division to like get that fourth spot. Yeah. Uh the for yeah, like you said, the first three seeds. I mean the Cowboys could win the division over Philadelphia, realistically. Um, if they beat the Eagles and then the Eagles sleep up sleep up, slip up one more time. Um, but yeah, the Eagles, I think the Eagles, the Vikings, the Niners are and then the Cowboys are very clearly the four best teams in that division. Uh the division, the conference. Um yeah. I think there's a significant drop off after that. Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. Like, I could, I could see all four of those teams going to the Super Bowl. I every other team is is just I don't no, want to say Tampa Bay is terrible, but like they're, they're pretty good. No, other, no other team in the NFC I could see going besides those four. Like I mean, no. the Buccaneers. Like I don't I don't want to count them out because just because of Tom Brady, but they are not playing well, and neither they is Tom are Brady. Decimated. Their offensive line is decimated. Yeah. So I I don't. I don't like the Bucks this year. Um, the Giants, I think, are a little. Yeah, like realistically, the um, Falcons could win that division. Yeah, they could. They're all, what are they? One game behind. 
Yeah, they're five and seven, and the um, the Bucks are five and six. Oh, so they are. Yeah, they're right there with them. Which that would be that'd be kind of wild if the Falcons. I would make love it. it. I don't think it matters that much because I think at the end of the day, it's going to be one of those top three teams making it. I mean, like, I, yeah. I mean, it, it's like you guys said after the Eagles, the Vikings, the Niners, and probably the Cowboys, it is a very significant drop off. Yeah, like, like I got the Eagles one, Vikings two, Niners three. Tampa Bay four, uh, Dallas five, Seattle I think will finish as the six seed, and then the Commanders as the seven seed. I think the Giants are not going to make the playoffs. I've been I've been saying this the entire season. I don't think the Giants are a good uh, that good of a football team, despite what their I record says. I, get, I just don't know where they came from. Like what? Like what? Yeah, like, they really aren't that good. No, I don't. And the past couple weeks have shown that. Like getting yeah, like I, the, I agree. The Giants, not the Giants. The Lions are like a very underrated football team. But the Lions they still got are embarrassed not at home. No, they're not bad. But they well, still see, got the embarrassed is, at home by the Lions. The issue with the Lions is that they, every game they lose is by a very close margin. So they aren't a bad football team by any means. They are young and they can't finish games they always like yeah. i mean the the thanksgiving game against the bills was a prime example of how they just shoot themselves in the foot with mistakes and that's how they lose the game because they're young they're inexperienced um their head coach is also young and inexperienced so i mean they are a good football team it's just they they can't close out these games because they just they just can't quite get over that hump yet because I feel like they're young and inexperienced, you know? But they are a good football team. Yeah. I think the biggest issue with the Giants is I'm looking at their remaining schedule. It is very difficult. They've got two games against the Commanders, two games against the Eagles, a game at Minnesota, and then a game against the Colts, which the Colts are objectively the worst team in that group, but I still think they can beat the Giants. Okay, but um, the Colts, like, the Colts, yes, are a bad team. But if we take them compared to the NFC, they might not be quite as bad because the, the, the Colts NFC could, is. Yeah, if the Colts were playing the AS or the NFC this year, they very well could still potentially make the playoffs as like nine and eight or something like the that. The NFC, the NFC is, is just bad. It, it, the NFC is way worse than the AFC, and that's not even a question. Yeah. So the Colts could still win that game, and like you yeah. said, them against the Eagles. I mean, that's. I don't know for sure, but more than likely, Eagles that's probably two, two L's losses. Right there. Yeah, yeah, and then Eagles twice, Commanders, Commanders twice, Minnesota, and yeah, Commanders can probably get them once, and then I think the Vikings will get them. So yeah, they they got a rough um, they got a rough stretch ahead. Yeah. So I don't. And then they got I, division tiebreakers. I, like uh, I like the Seahawks getting in over the Giants. Yeah, they've got division tiebreakers too. They already lost to the Cowboys twice, so that's a hole that they're putting themselves into. Um, yeah, and yeah, I, I think they win maybe two of these final four games, and they finish yeah. with nine wins. Um, I would be shocked if they win more than like three of the games that they have remaining on their schedule. Yeah, I agree. So the Giants are definitely going to be going on downhill slope, in my opinion. I think all the other teams are the same, though, in terms of the current playoff picture to what I have finishing as. I think I just yeah, swapped the Seahawks. Yeah, well, except the I, think the, I think the Seahawks hop in there, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In place of the Giants. Um, but other, other than that, I think that's really about – I mean, because, like, outside of these teams, it's – the NFC is terrible outside of those teams. So the yeah. Seahawks take the Giants, and other than that, I think that's pretty much that. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on the Vikings? Because right now they're nine and two, and they've, I feel like they've kind of overachieved. They have overachieved. I think, I think the Vikings are the real deal. Well, I think the Vikings have kind of flown under the radar. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't even know they were eight and one a few weeks ago. They were eight and one. I didn't even know that. So, so I yeah. think the Vikings have kind of flown under the radar. I mean, Justin Jefferson is having obviously a dominant season, but I mean, I, the Vikings are really good and. They're, yeah. like, they're 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 quiet, it's, you know. Like they're 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 kind of flying under the radar, but they're a very good team. Yeah, it's based on what the Eagles have been doing in the NFC that's kind of taken the headlines. Um, but the yeah. Vikings are still a very good team. The the Bills were the first like they beat the Dolphins, but the 
Bills were the first like really, really good team that they beat um, in that yeah. instant classic of a game. But then they followed it up by losing by 37 points at home to the, the Cowboys. That was ugly. Which I, I also think the Cowboys are really good. Like everyone keeps saying, oh, this is a year of the Cowboys. I think this is actually the year that they can make a Super Bowl run. Like this might be but, the first time in about eight years that they have a team capable of winning the Super Bowl. And it pains yeah. me to say that. Well, I mean, I, I agree. I, I think I think the Cowboys are actually the real deal this year, but it it's hard to say that because of I mean, just because of how they normally are not. Like everybody says they are and they aren't. But like this year, they actually are. So it's kind of like, you know, it makes it harder to like think. Like it, you're 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 a little more hesitant to say that the Cowboys are the real deal because every year people say that, but until this year, they haven't been. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I they, think they, they have like though. a legitimate shot because both of their running backs right now are playing. Yeah, They're Tony hot. Pollard and Zeke. They have They're the defensive hot, right? player of the year on the other side of the ball. Yeah, and then they have the defensive player of the year in um, Micah Parsons. And that defense is, is really well. is really good. Yeah, he's playing a lot. Oh, excuse me. Um, and if yeah, they get think, Odell, that'd be a good signing. Yeah, that's looking that's looking like it's gonna happen. But I I think um, like the top four teams are the Eagles, Vikings, Niners, and Cowboys. I think that's for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a feeling that this like playoffs is going to be fairly interesting because I feel like there's at least the NFC is top heavy, and then the AFC is like it's going to be a open. Case. So I feel like we're going to be in for a very entertaining playoff. Because I agree. Um, I think it's I think it's going to be fun to watch, and these next couple of weeks are going to be really interesting because these next couple of weeks are going to be crucial for some teams, like winning mm-hmm. the division and then even getting in the playoffs. So yeah, yeah we're, we're think, getting to that like, point in the NFL season. Yeah, and I think um, you know, like we all say, like the AFC is objectively better than the NFC, which it is, but I, the NFC is pretty tight too. I mean, between the top four teams. It's not like – like the AFC is tight between like seven to eight teams, but, I mean, the NFC is also tight between those top four teams because I feel like between the Eagles, Vikings, Niners, and Cowboys, I think any of those four teams can win on any given day. Yeah, is it? I feel like this NFL season's flown by. Is that just me? Or? It feels no, like yesterday going, I was talking about the Colts beating the Chiefs and how it could potentially turn their season around. Now we're yeah. in week 12. Yeah, Thanksgiving I feel like it's passed. What happened? Yeah, I, I still like remember watching fun. week one. I remember yeah. watching the Bengals lose to the Steelers, and that was just terrible. <laughs> yeah, it seems like eons ago that that game happened. Yeah, this game, this season's going by really fast. I think it is yeah. wild. Like we're in December, we're heading in the well, we're we're heading into December, which is crucial for you know playoffs and everything. So it has been flying by mm-hmm. real fast here. Next thing you know, it will be uh, be in the playoffs. Yeah, I saw something. Uh, the Bengals had their first undefeated November since like 1981 or something like that. It was 1989, I think, is what it was. Yeah, yeah, somewhere first, in the 80s. yeah. yeah undefeated November. So the Bengals are hot. Uh, I, I I think the Bengals the Bengals might be the hottest team in the NFL right now. They are. I'd put Kansas City above them, but they're going to play well, next week. Yeah, so okay. we'll see. If, um, but if yeah. the Bengals. Can, if the Bengals can steal that win against the Chiefs, they – I don't know who's stopping them. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. They got the Bills, too, later in the in the year. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm, I am increasingly getting more and more confident each week. Oh, like, for, like for that matchup that. against the Bills, I don't know, man. Yeah, um, plus Jamar and Mixon are coming back this week. Yeah, yeah. I was going to touch on that. They're doing all this without Jamar Chase and Joe Mixon. So yeah, I think that's more impressive than anything. Yeah, I think I think this uh, this Titans game was, I mean that that was that was a playoff game. You it's know, I, a lot. 
I, I, I think that was a that was a playoff level uh, football game, and the Bengals played a very good game. Boys, do we have anything else before we wrap up? Any final closing thoughts? I think I think we covered it all. I think we covered it all. I don't think so. It's been a fun fun yeah, year so far this year. Yeah, and that's good. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, if you did, make sure to like this video and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.